Hey everyone, I am Amaterasu1 and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Welcome back, Cyrus. William and Philia await awaits you within. Welcome back. It seems you wasted no time putting your skills to work. How do I know? Why the recruit the recruitment officer called to regale me with the tale of your heroics. The pride in his voice was palpable. We Zions are truly fortunate to have you with us, Cyrus. Now, when we last spoke, I said that I wanted you to meet some friends, did I not? Well, I neglected to... Well, I, ne I, neglect I neglected to mention that you have already met. Tataru, please show them in. This way, sirs. <laughs> Thanks again for getting us out of that mess. We owe you our lives. But I don't think we've probably introduced ourselves. I'm Biggs. A and I'm... I'm... Gods, man, spit it out, will you? Witch, at your service. I am pleased to say that Biggs and Wedge will be staying with us for a while. Magic tech driven contraptions such as airships grow ever more vital to the city states of Eorzea. As a neutral party, it was judged that we Scions should serve as the keepers to this of this technology. Of course, for this we needed the knowledge of experts. And so we requested the assistance of Garland Ironworks, who very kindly sent us two of their finest engineers. Our happy family continues to grow. On behalf of the Scions, I bid you welcome to the Waking Sands. Like every soul here, I love Eorzea. And I count myself blessed to have been given this chance to stand with you. Stand with you all and fight for the future of the realm. Never have ever known such fulfillment, such help, such happiness. Now, having set aside the formalities, we have a favor to ask of you. Uriange, have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessian? Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have conducted a study at the behest of the Order of the Twin Adder. Papalimo, Ida, a synopsis, if you would. Our task was to survey the behavior of the Sylphs, a beast tribe indigenous to the Twelveswood. Oh, how to describe them. They look like gizzle greens, floating ones, that worship the primal Ramu. <clears throat> Though technically a beast tribe, Sylphs are blessed with a comparatively personable demeanor, conducive to peaceful communication. Offering us an invaluable opportunity to learn what the beast tribes know of the primals. While Ramu's existence is well documented, the Sylphs do not, or perhaps cannot, summon the primal any longer, insofar as can be ascertained. Until such time as we know, it would be unwise to assume that the threat posed by the primal has passed. Which leaves Gridania with the added worry of not knowing what they should be worrying about. <laughs> In that regard, they are hardly alone. What we can say with absolute certainty is that Gridania has its hands full fending off Garuda. Who, I need hardly remind you, is among the most savage and terrible of all known primals. Oh no, Titan was pretty bad, bro. In short, it is essential that we approach the Sylphs in as diplomatic a manner as possible. Words and actions can be misconstrued. The only sure way to communicate our intentions is the Echo. Winning the Sylphs' favor may well bring us a step closer to mitigating the threat of the Primals. 
Will you help us? That's kind of my I job am at this grateful. Point. Lovely. Well, as much as I'd like to help, I'm afraid I would be of little use to anyone in Gridania. A veritable babe in the woods. Ida and Papalimo, however, should be able to see the forest for the trees. Is that not so, Minfulia? Indeed. You are willing? Leave it to me. Us, Ida. Us! <laughs> Okie dokie. To Gridania. Too little to self silly any work alone. Plant, plant. Who wants to call upon the science? Once more, we are too. Ah, oh, big pardon. It's just a terrible habit of mine to think aloud. But tell me, what brings you to the adder's nest? Oh, this is in private cackle, reporting for, reporting for duty. That's the zeal I like to see of an enterprising young serpent. Morning, Commander. Sorry to disappoint you, but other business brings us here today. Ida, Papalimo. Always a pleasure to see the two of you. My men tell me you quest in the name of the Scions of late. Wait, my, my men tell me you quest in the name of the Scions of late. Quite so, Commander. A little bird t told us that the Twin Adder was in need of our adventuring prowess. Aye, your little bird sings true. No doubt you've heard that we're investigating the Sylphs, that curious beast trap that calls the depths of the Twelve Wards it, its home. The Sylphs are, for the most part, a peaceful bunch, much to the delight of the elder Seedseer, who has no desire to see her people embroiled in yet another fruitless war. The Twin Adder is of the same mind, and tis precisely for this reason that the Sylphs' relation to the primal Ramu has raised a flag of warning amongst our ranks. Friendly as they may appear, beastmen will be beastmen. Should there even be a sliver of chance that, some of, that the summoning of the primal might disturb the balance between Gridani and the Sylphic tribes, it is a possibility we cannot ignore. Better to be safe than sorry indeed. Do we strike at Ramu or leave the Sylphs to their own ways? That is the question, yet I find myself lacking ample knowledge to arrive at an answer. Opinions abound within Gridania, but to listen to only one's own, uh, only one's own is among the greatest mistakes a commander can make. I would hear from the other side, the Sylphs themselves, themselves, and seek an, uh, an impartial party to serve as my la liaison. Liaison? That's where you scions come in. The Sylphs of little solace remain untampered. Untempered and have held many a productive dialogue with our people. I would hear their candid thoughts on their tempered brethren. That said, I urge you to exercise due caution. Civic tradition and etiquette bear little resemblance to our own. It would not, it would not do to have any cross-cultural faux pas get in the way of productive parlay. In route to, to little solace, you have come Come upon Hawthorn Hut. Our officer stationed there can enlighten you as to how to win the Sylph's favor. May your expedition be a worthwhile one. A family pavalier with the Sylphs. This should be a pleasant enough diversion. The Hawthorn Hut, was it? Why, I believe the ferry departing from West Shore Pier should, should take us straight there. A family pavalier indeed. I hope this will be as straightforward as you say, Papa Lima. And if I'm so 
correct, I can just teleport. Yeah, I can just teleport straight there. teleport there. Nope. No, I'm not allowed. I have to go talk to this person first. I, the fairy dock at the base of the snow ship to carry you across the lake to the east route. Once you're ashore, head due east and you should find the Hawthorne hut without much trouble. The Hawthorns are our most welcoming folk who should have who should have known us no small measure of goodwill. Still, a bit of courtesy goes a long way. I would encourage you to stop by, by Full Flower Cone and introduce yourself to Rosa before you travel off. Oh, fine. Yes, yes. And if you notice, I have a bounce now. Bounce you can get once you reach level 20 after you joined a grand company. They are bloody useful if you want to get around quick. Go this way. Adventure, I think the 12. You couldn't have come at a more opportune time. Please, you must help us. Why, why it's a beast? The poor little, little dudes are under attack by murderous swarm hornets. These beehives are our are, are, are livelihood. We must save them. Okie dokie. Hornets. Why? Why? I came to say hi, and you make me so poor. Why? Thank you, friend. Finally, our bees can make their honey in peace. I know your your twelve cent moment they laid eyes upon you. Hmm? You travel to our hut, you say, and would speak with the, with the serpent officer there. There is one who goes by Amalia. He is a sentry at Jocelyn's fire, but makes regular excursions to our hut. He's quite enamored of her little honey and tales of my husband Rolf. Though I found him to be a bit tight lipped around those he's unfamiliar with. Oh, I know what you might try. Why don't you take a jar of fresh honey to him? I reckon you'll find him more than talkative then. Thank you. Uh, this way.
mate. Indeed, I am Amalian of Trinari. Your face is unfamiliar to you. Hmm? You have a present for me, you say? A jar of roses, honey, and freshly harvested to boot. You certainly know how to make a first impression, friend. Ah, so you are the avenger of whom the commander spoke. Do forgive me for being curt. My stomach was rumbling something fierce. My words, my words, this honey, like liquid gold. <laughs> Ahem, <laughs> forgive me. You have not come to, to you have come to discuss not honey, but sylphs. For all their whimsy, they are a worry a lot, particularly since the Empire has come to the shroud. And their trust, however, and they're and they're as friendly as any folk. They'll have you they have their quirks, but so do we all know. Would you would you know more? You do well to speak to Rosa's husband here, Rolf. He's forgotten more about the sylphs than I'll ever know. <laughs> thing or two about the sylphs, have you? I'll tell you one thing, they're peculiar folk. How peculiar, peculiar you ask? Well, let me tell you. They're, they're, er, uh, big pardon, friend. My memory's just not what it used to be. I've seen much and more in my adventuring days, and it's all cluttering my, clutter, and it's all cluttering my noggin now. Though I've shared my stories with those around the happy four, you might have more luck with them. The Sylphs? Yes, Father told me his stories plenty of times. What I have found most captiva captivating about the concept of etiquette is almost completely alien to our own. You do best not to under underestimate them on account of their childlike looks. At least you end up in a at least your face end up in a mess of gillifs, squiggles, and chuckable scratches. <laughs> way to a corporate woman's heart might just be through her stomach. But don't even think about trying to hoist your cuffs on a hoist your food stuffs on itself. They just claim themselves by simply bathing in the sun or so Roth once told me. The Sylphs? Interrupt tricksters and troublemakers, that's what they are. One day they're dolling marble faces on a they're drawing marble faces on a mask. Next is sending our young sentries falling to the bottom of a, of a ravine. Tell them to stop and they just laugh at you. Rolf claims they harbor no ill will, but I dare say such pranks are no, are no laughing matter. on a pole. Oh, of course, of course, hearing your stories, well, my stories, has brought the memories flying back to me. I feel, I feel like dancing. Yes, dancing brings people together quite like a little toe tapping. A self told me long ago that dancing is a time order greeting am among their kind. You do well to remember this. It just may help you win favor with our first friends. You still here? Oh, still here, eh? Great, there's one more thing you should know about the Sylphs. They don't take kindly to guests who show up empty-handed. To earn their chest, you'll do us well bring along a... Uh... 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 What was it again? And Rosa and I were just speaking speaking of the matter not days ago. Forgive me, friend. Speak to Rosa at the comb. Her memory should prove more reliable than my own. Yeah, a lot of back and forth. It's a good thing I have a chocobo now. Ah, 
a few songs for yourselves. I'd give you another jar of my honey, but I fear they wouldn't that wouldn't get you past the front doorstep, dear. No, the tastes run in more of the unusual. Are you perchance familiar with milk root? That's what we call the root of the most fiendish seed, fiendish seed kin, the oak, oak chew. When chewed, it exudes a cloudy liquid that's said to induce curious visions of the imbiber. You'd not catch me dead trying this up, but the cells seem to enjoy it to no end. I'm not seeing no two around the comb in quite some time, but I did encounter a suspicious lump of grass the other day. Well, you just simulate- well, you just stimulate it somehow. With some of this amber soup, for example, you might be surprised what comes out. Good luck. Uh, all this just so I can talk to plant people. Just want to talk to the plant people. Yeah, that's right. You don't attack me. Hi. Ah, you're back. Cause my wife able to direct you to a more suitable offering. Milk fruit, but of course, those sales. Whop, it, whop that cloudy stuff as quick as I can do a flag of mead. The effect's just about the same as well. Anyway, all the gift of milk root will have themselves calling you friend and brother the moment they lay, lay eyes on it. Now let me wrap that up for you. I'm sorry to feel a bit woozy. Oh, I leveled up! I've taken the liberty of wrapping your milk root at well and good. This should keep it nice and fresh, not to mention spare you that god's awful stench. It sells lots of stuff, but me, I'd rather bury me nose in a chokehold. I'd rather bury me my nose in chokehold dung. I dare say the reeks even rivals the breath of the more bowl that put an end to my adventuring days. But I can tell you that story another time. You've more important mountains to attend today, yes? The cells are an, are an eccentric bunch, but I've shared their company enough to know that to know their kind at heart. They'll not shun those whose intentions are true. May your parlay be a fruitful one, friend, and do stop by on your return. There's a flagon of full flower med with your name on it if you regale me with your adventuring tales. Ah, before I forget, don't go to space. Chap sing off just yet. Amalia in here would have a word with you. Travel in safety, friend, and do pass along my regards to the winged ones. I'm gonna end the episode here. Ugh, the things I do to talk to these plant people.